all right guys so our device is now updated as you can see the first thing that you notice is this new wallpaper as you can see here and just look at this new dock that we have here it looks basic as you can see and it stands out from the background and i have to say that after this update i got a whole bunch of notification it's like it was keeping all the notifications uh hidden and this is just simple notifications let me just you know uh terminate all these um, notifications so I notice already one bug that I have here if I pull up notifications on this second display it doesn't come up but instead it comes on the main display so I don't know why that is so but let me just clear the notifications on the main display and try pull it up here so yeah uh, it seems like I can't pull up notifications on this secondary display so that's the first bug that I've noticed now let's look at the design changes to applications if we can see the launch pad here it's now changed and it's designed in the way that indicates different changes as you can see you can tell that this will take you to a list of different applications and if we click that you can see the whole different now this music app used to be round as you can see it's now squared as you can see FaceTime has a new logo and quite a number of other apps have different designs as you can see so that's something new that came with this update and I have to say that it's actually not major when it comes to the way that these applications look but yeah a few others have been changed and yeah they just look a bit more boxy going back to the home center here you can see that we now have like some sort of control center that is very similar to what we have on the ipad or iphone and i can easily adjust brightness here and by the way my brightness isn't working so i can't um sort of change or increase brightness either on the main display or secondary display perhaps it's because i'm recording but yeah if it continues to happen i'll do a follow-up video where i highlight bugs so yeah it's very good actually that you can access most of your controls by just a single tap you can be able to switch off wi-fi bluetooth airdrop and then keyboard brightness let me see if that works Oh yeah that is working by the way keyboard brightness is working so i don't know why the screen brightness is not working and yeah i can be able to change the volume here and if i'm playing music i can be able to play music here also for display if i sort of uh, 3d touch or just click on it again and like that i can be able to change dark mode and as you can see this is the light mode and here is the dark mode so this is kind of cool and yeah it's actually nice and i like it you know it's something new that came with this mac os big Sur update going into settings you can see that the network logo has changed this screen time has changed also notification has changed it's a bigger bell with a red notification and the whole battery icon has changed so let's go to the battery section there you can see that we have a whole new battery icon here to display the battery and the percentage in the middle and also you can see like some sort of usage history and screen on usage at the moment so since I just updated to this update as you can see here I don't have any record on file I would have really wished that most of the records that I had on the previous update that is 10.15.6 would have been carried over but on a good note i never lost all my files most of the things that i had in this computer seem to be just fine i haven't seen anything that has been lost or removed most of my folders that were on the desktop are as they are and nothing is lost and that is something good so this is what's new in safari as you can see we have a new privacy report that tells you if websites or apps are tracking you and we also have built-in translation and that is a beta it's not the official version but it's a beta so we expect it to have some deficiencies and also we have customizable start page and improved extension support now at the launch apple claimed that this new safari will be like 50 percent faster than google chrome now i highly doubt that but however they also claim that when it comes to optimization and the way it optimizes with the new os and the 
MacBook is better than Chrome. Usually I get faster speeds on Chrome. However, if I want better optimization or battery life, if I'm on battery, I usually use Safari and I do agree with Apple that it results in better optimization and battery efficiency. Now some new features that came with Safari, if we go, let's open some tabs here and see what are some of the new features that came with Safari and then we'll open another tab. Okay, by the way, my Safari doesn't seem to be working proper. As you can see, most of the clicks are unresponsive at the moment. I don't know if this is a bug and it seems like it's a serious one by the way. So let's try and add some pages. And the moment I click this new, uh, tabs here it actually doesn't do anything so let me kill safari and try again as you can see here when you hover over a page or a tab you can sort of see like a preview of the page or tab and that is something new that came with this update so my safari is actually not working it's very very unstable and as you can see clicks are responding way after i click and that is a bug that came with this update hopefully when i restart the mac most of these stuff go away as i just updated and started recording for you after doing a bit of a research on what's new and what's changed so this is a new feature that shows that when you hover your cursor over a certain tab it shows you like a preview of what's in that tab so safari can also do translation for example let's go to a website that's in french like yahoo.far so this website in, is in French and by default, we should be able to translate it to uh, like English cause the default language I set my Safari into is English. And I actually am not getting the translate option there as you can see. So perhaps that's a bug that came for me when it comes to Safari, but this tracking option is working far so far, as you can see, we have quite a number of trackers. And if we click on that, you can see like where the different trackers were coming from. But yeah, that's something new that came with this update when it comes to Safari. Now Siri also did get an update and as you can see there, he, the UI experience hasn't changed, but I noticed from the moment I cancel Siri and I'm doing like heavy duty on this Mac, the fans will be running at maximum capacity. And then when I activate Siri, everything goes silent by the way. So that's something good and something new that came with this update. I like it. And also Siri UI hasn't been improved. It's just that it got a little bit better. It can now do more complex functions and it now has the ability to recognize more commands. This is the new notification panel, by the way, if you click there, you can see that, you know, we now have widgets on the notifications and also you can be able to edit your widgets by just going to the edit page here. And if you want to add widgets, you can easily add widgets. Let's say for example, this, um, watch list widget, and then we can add it there and you can also change the size of the widget. You can select small, medium and large. And as you can see, if we want to add a large one, we just click add and yeah, the large one goes there. And if we want to remove a widget, we just click the minus sign. And that's something new and something good that came with this update. And once you're done editing your widget, you just click the done button and you are back to your home page. Now, another big update that came with this update is maps. So if we open maps here, you can see that now have look around and street viewing. So let's say, for example, if I go to Times Square, you can see that we have options for direction, create route or look around. And if you click look around option, you can see that you can be able to look around um, Times Square and double clicking forward takes you forward. And you can see that it's quite a smooth transition. And in my opinion, I would say that sometimes it works sometimes it glitches and it's not yet on the level of google maps but it's something that they are working for and i tried searching for 
different cities in Canada and they are not available. So it's something that's in progress and it's good to know that look around has been added. And whenever you ask for direction, you have the options to be able to cycle, which is something good that came with this update. Now, if you have AirPods or AirPods Pro, you now have simultaneous synchronization between all your devices that are connected to the AirPods. So let's say, for example, you are editing a video on your MacBook and then you receive a video call on FaceTime on the iPhone. So your AirPods will automatically switch to the call on FaceTime. And then let's say, for example, you start streaming something on Netflix, perhaps on the laptop, your AirPods will be able to transition between the different activities that you'll be doing on your devices. And next, let's look at applications that have received minor improvements. We first of all have the mail app. When you open your inbox, you now have more vibrant and rich colors. And also when you go into your photos app, you are able to zoom in and out by a large margin, unlike before. And also the notes section has been quite improved. You have more search options and you can also collapse all pages. Messages on the MacBook has also been slightly improved. You now have add mentions, which also came to the iPhone. So if you're in a group chat and you add mention someone, that person will get a notification and they'll be able to also add reply you. And also that's something good that came with this update and you have more search options. You are able to search for specific things in messages. And that's something that wasn't before and came with this Mac OS Big Sur. Now FaceTime has also been upgraded slightly. It now recognizes sign language. And if someone is trying to speak in sign language and you are on a group FaceTime call, it gives that person Person automatic prominence and that person comes in the forefront of the group discussion so that you are able to understand what they are saying now if you are a person who uses voice recordings a lot you now are able to group your voice recording so you first of all create a new group and then you record a new voice note and then you can easily add it to your different groups that you have created in the voice notes the weather app shows more details and for specific regions at the moment, it's able to show hourly update. Currently for me, it's not doing that, but yeah, it's now a bit improved and it's able to show hourly updates. And if your area has like a weather warning or emergency in effect, it will be able to highlight or alert you on that. Now, those are the main and major features that came with Mac OS Big So I am going to continue testing it out and I'll highlight most of the major bugs and performance and battery wise in a few days as I continue to use it. But at the moment, for me, it seems like it's very buggy. And if you look at the software version, it has a V at the end. And usually when it comes to these software version build numbers, A usually represents the highest stability and a V in this case is like on the lowest, lowest end of the stability chain. So it's very unstable. I expect it to come with quite a number of issues and bugs. And also just something on the side worth mentioning is that Apple is slowly transitioning towards their own on silicon chips so instead of using intel processors they will be able to use their own apple silicon chips which will result in better optimization and efficiency on the macbook that's about it for me guys thank you very much for watching and reaching this far into the video stay safe and i will catch you guys in the next one peace